In today's video, we're going to be diving in to the upcoming pattern, taking a look at very, very interesting times ahead. There is going to be a lot of up and downs. And again, we've talked about this for a while, but this is going to increase the probability of some more intense, intense storms overall. And I do see some thunderstorm and severe weather risks to the deeper south and even some surprisingly far north areas at times, so we're going to discuss that. And there is still a few signals, a few opportunities for snowfall events in areas like the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. So it's not just completely shut down over the next two to three weeks. We do have the potential for some systems moving in as we kind of get not so much those ups, but once we get those little spurts of downs with the temperatures. We're going to be talking about all of this. Let's first off discuss how the past 15 days have gone. And this is essentially going to be your first half of December. And it has been epic. There's no way around it. We have seen a strongly, very definitively positive PNA pattern, which just means warmer temperatures along that western seaboard. And this creates the imbalance that directs the cold air into the east, which we can see has taken place. But for a 15-day period, this is impressive. The greens are 10 to 15 degrees below normal, uh, very, very far below average for an average of 15 days. That is extreme. And the reason why it was so extreme is because we had a polar vortex event that really disrupted the Arctic air and dispersed it further south into areas like Canada and the United States. So the west is what directed it towards the east, but the Arctic is what really intensified it to the level that we saw over the past 15 days. Let's go ahead and just talk about what is upcoming though. And again, it isn't going to be nearly as cold as we're kind of evolving into a little bit of a different pattern for the next two weeks, it appears, that it's going to be a lot more back and forth, a lot more major storms though, because we have those changing air masses. It's just going to be more volatile overall. As we look at this afternoon, really not a lot happening. I mean, we have some activity there in the Northwest, some snow and rainfall happening, uh, and they've had an excessive amount of precipitation as of late. But other than that, very, very quiet. We're going to be able to just kind of glance at this and move right past it. Wednesday does get a little bit more interesting. We have kind of a double dipping trough, one over the West Coast, and then one here more so over the East with a bit of a ridge here for the Plains and then offshore of the East Coast. So two troughs, two ridges. Typically, when we see more of these um, hills and valleys with the jet stream, if you will, that's going to create a more progressive pattern that's moving quicker from west to east. So expect a lot more storms moving across the nation. Also, we do have this kind of strong tropical push, which is allowing for some thunderstorms to take place on multiple occasions, again, throughout the deep south and uh, areas even further northward than that. And we are going to be monitoring the severe weather risk throughout December. It doesn't look really, really elevated to me. But it does look to be a possibility, which I can't really say for that much of the previous two weeks. We did have some events, but it does look a little bit more potential than that. Uh, as we just advance this a little further towards Tuesday, we can see some super interesting stuff happening here by the 18th, or sorry, Thursday the 18th. What we see is a 986 millibar low pressure center there over Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, and this one has a strong, well-defined cold front underneath, bringing a lot of turbulent weather. We'll get to that in a second. We do have a warm front out ahead of it, though, uh, and this is to the north of the warm front, causing some snowfall for Canada here. We also have where this Arctic air is pouring in behind the system, behind the cold front, some snowfall happening for the northern plains, Minnesota, and overall the upper Midwest as well. A couple of features, I'm going to redraw this cold front because it's pretty critical uh, to note, is our main area of this cold front, and this will come with some heavier showers, some wind risks, and to the south, I believe, even thunderstorm chances for Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana. But we have another feature happening here as we have this warm front up over the top. We have this really quickly surging humid and hot temperatures. Not hot, I think that's a little excessive, but overall warmer temperatures. And we see these storms flowing in through the southeast. And I do suspect that out ahead of the cold front, we could get some isolated and scattered thunderstorms happening here by this Thursday on the 18th. It's going to be relatively warm, uh, especially compared to what we're used to. But we can see the Arctic air is on the way in this instance behind that cold front. So it's going to be up and down, as we mentioned earlier. Some more storminess overall for the northwest. Snowfall in the Sierra Nevadas and uh 
or not the Sierra Nevadas, better yet, the Cascades and the Northern Rockies here. Really, really impactful. And as we kind of just move this ahead, we can see just a whole lot of precipitation here in the east. Again, your main cold front is back here, and then we have this kind of like surging uh, area of showers and thunderstorms perhaps out to the east of it. This is a pretty classic setup if this was the spring. Uh, very unusual for December 20th to see this much convection all over the place. We're going to have to watch and see how this plays out. We're still a few days away from this, which for thunderstorm events is pretty far out. So we're going to watch it closely and, and kind of see how the conditions line up. But I think it could be a very interesting system here. We see the Great Lakes getting some lake effect snowfall as that Arctic air moves in as we head towards Friday. So Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, New York, all getting some lake effect snowfall here. And overall, we see the mountainous northeast starting to see some snowfall as all of it's passing through and some precipitation is left over for Friday into Saturday. That's the 19th and 20th. We do have another system here to the north of North Dakota that looks like a clipper system taking aim. The problem is this jet stream is rapidly rising to the north, so I don't think this is going to dive south really hardly at all. We continue to see activity in the northwest as well. We can see that clipper system, instead of diving southward, just kind of moves across the Great Lakes a little bit across the northeast, but mostly impacting Canada. And then by the 21st, we do have a ridge in the west, and we do have a trough in the east. They're just extremely subtle. Uh, a little colder in the east here for the weekend, a little warmer out west, but it's not as high of a contrast as we've seen previously between those two areas. We do see a lot of precipitation in the west still. Get ready to hear me say that a lot. Uh, as we move towards Monday, the 22nd here, we do see some snowfall for the Midwest and Great Lakes kind of moving across the nation, and that does end up impacting uh, the northeast here for sometime around the 23rd, 24th, 25th, where we get some colder air for the northeast for Christmas. Um, it gets warmer after that, though. Here is the 26th, the morning of the 26th, and models have been really consistent with a stronger low being located either over southeastern Canada the northeastern United States around the Christmas time frame or maybe just immediately afterwards. And we'll be watching for some New England snow, snowfall perhaps from that. The west remains active here. Jet stream is sort of uh, combining with the southern jet here. We're getting a lot more flow straight in through the southwest. This is over 10 days out, so we're going to watch it closely, but definitely interesting. And as time goes on, uh, we can see a lot more activity heading towards the west after Christmas. Uh, as we're overall left with a trough in the west, more ridge in the east. So again, the opposite of what we've seen overall for the first 15 days of December here. And as we get these lows kind of traveling along this uh, jet stream, you're going to be watching for severe weather and thunderstorm activity underneath. So I think that this, if we see this type of setup, which again, it is beyond 10 days out, but this could be another uh, factor to watch for here uh, as we move into late December. And we can see that again watch the activity just rise up in the deep south here at the end of the model run that's the type of stuff we're kind of watching out for with continued activity out west as well uh, that's kind of the long range stuff that we're looking at on these models although a lot of our teleconnections do point to a return of that arctic air and snowfall opportunities at some point um this particular model the european has just been really warm yesterday and today compared to the gfs even so we're going to watch that now and kind of get a cross comparison but as we move along, uh, I'm going to get to where we actually have some pretty big differences, but we can see the same exact setup here for Thursday. Cold front here, rising showers and thunderstorms underneath that warm front for the southeast corridor. Both of those factors are very similar here on these two models, so great agreement. Uh, also, again, the Great Lakes snowfall and then also into the higher elevations of the northeast happening. And then as we kind of move on, we do get this setup uh, for that weekend, so the 20th, 21st, and then into the early week, 22nd here, where we do have a pretty decent ridge over the west and a more decent trough over the east. And this is definitely a step above what we saw on that European model. So this is a little bit more optimistic for cold and snowfall opportunities to return. We do see that warmth return for Christmas Eve here, and that does last through Christmas Day, where your jet stream is overall relatively high to the north this would create milder conditions underneath but again we can see a low taking place over the northeast for christmas and the day following we do see a return to a descending pattern into the east there's a little bit of a ridge over the west and a trough heading towards the east and this type of trough 
would likely bring Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast cooler temperatures, but that warmth looks to be putting up a fight for areas in the South Central states and even into the Southeastern states. So a little bit of a battle, but we do end up seeing a low slide along this, this jet stream, pretty classic to what we've seen so far, and we do get a signal perhaps in the very long range here. This is 288 hours out, so just beyond 10 days. Uh, for some activity moving along in a clipper-like storm track into the mid-Atlantic or perhaps the northeast here. So again, there is some signals there that could easily pull up the coast if this jet stream is oriented differently, which when we're talking about, you know, 11, 12 days out, that's certainly possible. It looks like it wants to take a northern curve there for a minute, but it kind of just dies down. And then towards the end of the model run, we do get a, a more northern similar storm uh, that wants to move more through the mid-Atlantic and bring areas like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and the northeast some snowfall there towards the end of the model run. So again, these are not very close to now. There's obviously going to be some changes, but it's good to see these signals. It's telling us that the models are supportive of a pattern that would support those types of storms, which is a good initial sign when we're talking about 10, 11, 12 days out. Something to kind of just pay attention to, and of course we'll be doing that on the channel here. Your total precipitation is gargantuan for the West Coast. The snowfall is going to be crazy out there. And we can see a little bit of an increase in activity here in the overall eastern states as well. So looking at the anomalies, we're not seeing quite as far below average precipitation in the east. More close to normal here in either case with some above average precipitation popping up. But the west is just crazy with the above normal uh, precipitation there. Now, the total snowfall here on your European model is huge for the mountainous west and a little bit more suppressed to the north with the snowfall here for the north central and northeastern states. But this is actually an improvement from yesterday. We're starting to see this line creep a little further to the south, which is a good sign that the models are maybe being a little less aggressive with the warmth in the east. We'll continue to monitor that. The GFS model says, hey, you know, we're going to have some systems diving a little further south into areas like the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. And it's certainly something that we're going to be watching for here moving forward. So with all that stuff being said, be sure to subscribe, guys. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.